Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about routing protocol metrics. We know that there are several different routing protocols. We've learned about RIP. In time, you'll learn about EIGRP, OSPF, and eventually BGP. And each one of these routing protocols has unique characteristics and features to it, and they're used uh, for certain reasons at certain points in the network. However, all routing protocols use a metric, and so that's what we're going to focus on here. We'll start off by determining the purpose of the metric. What's it used for? And then we'll go ahead and take a look at RIP in action. We'll take a look at the hop count and determine how the metric is used there. And then finally, we'll look at routing protocol metrics between different routing protocols, and you'll see that they're not the same. Each routing protocol is unique. Okay, so the purpose of a routing protocol metric? Well, the purpose is to determine the best route when multiple routes are learned. So a router could receive routing updates from several other different routers all about the same network. And it needs a mechanism to determine the best one. Well, that's where the metric comes into play. And a metric is a numeric value. And it's different between each routing protocol. It could be a small value or a very large value. And the routing protocol will look at the metric of all the similar routes, and it will use the lowest metric to determine the best route. So the general rule of thumb is the lower the metric, the better the route. And so a routing protocol will look and it will compare. And if it didn't have a metric, it would have all of these updates about the same network, but it wouldn't know which one to use. It wouldn't have any basis to determine the best route. Okay, so that's the purpose, to determine the best route. So let's go ahead and take a look at RIP and see how hop count is used. Here's our sample network, and RIP is a really good example to use because we just learned about how RIP works and how to configure it. So here we're going to be focusing on router D, and specifically it's going to learn about the 10.10.10 network, which hangs off of router A, and it's going to learn about it from both router B and router C. So let's take a look at what happens and then how it chooses the best route. Well, router A starts off by sending an update to router B with a hop count of 1. And then when router B sends its update out, the 101010 10, 10 network is going to have a hop count of 2, and it sends it to both router D and to router C. And then finally, router C will send an update, and that update will include the same route, 101010-24. 10, 10, 10, However, now its hop count has been increased to 3. So finally, router D has learned the same route but it learned it from two different sources, router B and router C. So now it needs to choose, which one am I going to put into my routing table? So it looks at the metric of RIP, which is hop count, and this is pretty simple to figure out. It will end up choosing the update from router B because a hop count of two is more preferable to a hop count of three. Pretty straightforward. The lower metric wins. It's the it's the better route. It's the more efficient route. And RIP is a pretty simple protocol in terms of its metric because it's just counting the number of hops, the number of points in the network in order uh, that it has to pass through in order to get to the destination. Um, we mentioned that not all metrics are equal between the routing protocols. And if we list them out, we can see exactly what we mean by that. So if we compare the three routing protocols we've mentioned so far, we know that RIP uses hop count. EIGRP, the metric there, um, is based on a few different components. Two of the components are bandwidth and delay. And so these are completely different than the concept of using a hop count. And then if we look at OSPF, the metric there is a cost, and that's derived from the bandwidth involved with the different links involved. So you can see if you were to compare each one of these, they're completely different. And in fact, it's very hard to compare them because they, they don't use the same basis of, of, uh, of measurement for their metrics. Okay, So the point to take away is when you're using a routing protocol, you just need to be aware of what the metric is based on and how it's used. Because you can see here, it's very different between each of these three. And BGP is yet different again from all three of these. Okay? 
So if we want to summarize, the real important points to take away here is that metrics are used by routing protocols when a route is learned from multiple sources and the routing protocol has to choose the best route. That's what the metric is used for. And generally speaking, the best route is chosen based on the lowest metric. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the basics of routing protocol metrics. Thanks for watching.